Hello, friends. Welcome to Love Wrestling. Welcome to the premiere edition of The Mind Behind. And welcome to our first sponsored show. It's a very good day for a lot of reasons. But of course, most importantly, because I'm joined by one of the best in the biz, the best in the biz, if you ask me. I've pumped your tires. I've said it enough that I feel comfortable <laughs> standing by it. The interview queen, Alicia Atut, joining me. Of course, if you're starting a new show, you got to kick off with a big guest. You know that, I'm sure, even better than I do. So why not start with someone who's obviously really great at what they do, but is just a good friend. Alicia, it's great to have you here. Thanks for joining me. How are you doing? What a lovely intro. Hello, Spence. I'm super excited about this. I feel like this has been in the making for a couple months we've been talking, so I'm really, yep. really psyched. I'm so excited you to be here. You and I both. And of course, if you guys are in the comment section, whether you're watching on Twitch or YouTube Live, we're live with the interview queen. It's very rare that she gets the opportunity to get your questions answered at, <laughs> on time, live time, right here, right now. And we've already got a couple of people hopping in. Sandy hopping in. Good morning from Germany. And of course, Sandy, Thanks for jumping in. A huge supporter I know of the both of us. And I, I think I can speak for Alicia on saying how appreciated it is. It's been a wild few months, hey? I think the last time we did an interview together or any sort of conversation together was about a year ago at this point. We were thinking, hey, this pandemic's going to be a short-term thing, isn't it? And huh. here we are. <laughs> I know. It's kind how of nuts. Things? Things are going okay, you know. I'm healthy, so that's the main thing with everything going on right now. Otherwise, just keeping busy. It feels extremely strange to not be traveling all the time. Like, every weekend, right. I was not home. And now all I am is home. So it's been really strange, but I'm trying to just, you know, keep my chin up, keep hustling, keep getting bigger interviews and collaborations. And it's almost been busier than ever, but I, I do miss just being out in the world. So, yeah, man, what's the What's the traveling experience been like for you? Because you've been lucky enough to go down and work for MLW, of course, in an undisclosed location. And then you had the chance to go yeah. down and catch the Warrior Wrestling Show, I think, two or three months ago. So, like, what's yeah. it even like? Are you sort of the same as I am where it's – I'm I'm almost nervous to be within six feet of people at this point? Or how was oh. it for you? You should have seen me at these shows. I literally should have just had, like, a meter stick in front of me. Like, stay away. <laughs> Like, it was not something I took lightly. And when the opportunities came about to go down to those shows and it actually worked and we didn't have as strict travel measures back then, back in September and October, I was all for it. I'm like, you know what? I miss doing this. I miss just do hosting, doing my thing, seeing people. So I was lucky enough it all just worked out. But I went through probably my two weeks down there six or eight bottles of sanitizer like everything I touched <laughs> I was like ah! <laughs> dude you and I both it's absolutely Ooh. horrible but again glad to hear that it all went well for you it's been absolutely awesome to watch MLW come back and you know I think you and I both agree in the sense that MLW really stands out because of the grit and because of that sort of uh, rough around the edges mentality yeah. to them sometimes in the most positive ways. And it's been so cool to see that being taken to another level with the restart and the couple of major events you guys have had. How have you enjoyed it? What's the process been like uh, oh. getting back into the swing of things, not just as the interview queen? It's been super, super fun. I went from March 2020, where we had our huge 5,000-seater full uh, show in Tijuana, Mexico with AAA, to literally yeah. months and months and months. I think it was eight months until I did anything because of the pandemic last year. So being yeah. able to be back with everyone. We had COVID testing done, so I felt safe. because I'm literally this close to everyone. When I, like, I'm the yeah. promo girl. So I was scared shitless prior but hey everything worked out. <laughs> um we got tested i knew every every single person tested negative which was incredible so once that was out of sight out of mind i was like sweet let's do this so it was just great having the band back together seeing which directions they wanted to take things different storylines and arcs and we did some really fun stuff that has yet to air and i just can't wait to be able to see it it's uh it's been really wonderful working for them definitely well, and a couple of people in the comments have already started asking about what one of my first questions was going to be, but we've got people in here, the Putting You Over show. Alicia's been holding her own in lately, especially dealing with Richard Holiday and Selena De La Renta. We have a couple of Team Alicia, of course, Sandy hopping in with that as well, but uh, obviously you don't need to tear the curtain back too much. I know you guys don't get along to, uh, to say the very least, but what's it been like sort of getting in, um, I guess, a wrestling feud, for lack of a better way to put it? You don't always see managers and backstage interviewers interact like this, so what's it been like for you sort of dipping your toes in that water? Oh, it's been definitely 
different for me. I mean, in the past, there were for sure some people I never saw eye to eye with. I know recently you had Joe Hendry on the show. Uh, him and I had some very bad moments together. <laughs> he, he was... I asked him about it. For what it's worth, he, he looked back on them very positively. So there, there's a face turn in the long run somewhere there. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, you know, I, I've had crazy interactions with everyone from MJF to Scarlett Bordeaux. And now it's really just been these feuds with Richard Holiday and Selena De Laurenta. And they're both just truly terrible human beings who I tried being friends with. I tried just having respect towards them and getting along. And clearly that did not work. So at that <laughs> point, I was like, you know what? If you're going to be that way. I'll be that way too. If you're not going to give me respect, you are getting none from me. So now it's just been kind of like a back and forth pissing contest for months. And hey, if I get to show that side of me and, you know, sometimes people start, oh, she's just the innocent interviewer. Little. It's like I bring so much more to the table. And if that has to do with having some few that organically has sparked about, <laughs> I'm all for it. Uh, bring it on. <laughs> bring it on. Well, and that is one of the interviews that I don't think we need to even sell any more on here. If you guys want to check out Alicia's YouTube channel, it's 100% a huge recommendation of mine. She does a great job recently. Like, and again, every time we talk, it's so cool for me that not only you're talking to big names in both music, wrestling, and now bodybuilding as well, but there's such a diverse crew. Like you had Cannibal Corpse, Taylor Hendricks, Pretty Reckless, and then yeah. Stephanie McMahon, right? How, how do you prepare yourself differently for all of those interviews? I know you do a lot of research, but I'd even have to assume, you know, almost a high school mentality if you've got your metal heads you've got your super yeah. preppy people right i have to assume it's a bit of a different prep on the personality end well it's weird because the way you broke it down like it just reminds me of myself like i'll have days where i'm a total hippie just listening to some 70s tunes and then i'll have another day where i'm just feeling like kind of down and i'm like going back to that 16 year old emo alicia so it's almost yeah. like i i am all of these people so when I have them on my show it's because I genuinely like them or there's something we have you know recently I've had to hash out but um it's just been super fun so when it comes to prep I always say I'm a professional stalker I treat them all the same way in terms of just deep diving through their socials through past interviews just trying to find unique things while sticking away from the you know cookie cutter wikipedia questions you know we can we can yeah. find out that kind of stuff super easily. What's your so, favorite match? <laughs> yeah. When did you start training? Blah, blah, blah. It's like literally right there on their wiki. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's just one of those things where I kind of do treat it the same because it sounds strange, but in a way, when you're doing research, they're like a subject. And so you yeah. have to find everything you can on them. And then the human element comes in when you find all these hobbies that they like. And, oh, they have a dog. Oh, my gosh. They like Mario Kart. Like, we're going to talk about that. So yeah. it's kind of treated the same way. And then when I find all the little facts, that's when it kind of unravels and I treat everyone differently, if that makes sense. 110%. I want to get back to the interviews in a second because the premise, of course, of the mind behind is let's highlight some of the best of the best in content creation. But we got a comment in here from that Carl Robinson, who also did comment hi from England earlier. And I got to apologize anytime I miss comments. But what are Alicia's thoughts on the Dragon Gate deal with MLW? And that was something I wanted to ask you about, too, because just comes out a couple of days ago and certainly something I'm excited for. You even look at Dragon Gate as a proverbial casual fan I guess and they're just such a stacked roster and you compare that to MLW and you and I have had that conversation a ton right yeah. it's just such a such a great promotion both wrestling wise you know backstage interviewer wise and so on and so forth yeah it's one of those things where anytime we get to collaborate with a different promotion company whoever it might be it's so exciting because you never you never know who you'll end up working with. You never know who yeah. you'll be doing that promo with, who you'll meet through it, uh, how it's going to affect ratings and crossovers. There's so many doors that open with just a single opportunity. So we're going to have some great, not only matchups, but just guys in the locker room who I just cannot wait to be in the same room as. So it opens up a lot. And I think anytime MLW does a crossover, it's always treated incredibly well. We don't just put over our talent. The whole point is for this collaboration to rise together. So mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of cool stuff people are going to love seeing, including just some really cool talent. So yeah, I'm psyched for it. It always comes down to like, I'm a fan too, you know that. So uh, I can't wait for some of this stuff. Half the time that shows, if I'm not running around like a chick with my head cut off, sorry, I'm just fixing my, my hair here. But um, 
I will just sit there trying to hide behind the camera so you don't see me and just watch matches like for hours. So yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm excited to say the least. Absolutely. Now you've teased a couple in this interview itself, nonetheless, on your social media and all of that, but you've alluded to some upcoming projects without, uh, again, giving away too much. I don't want to take away the pop from Alicia Hattut's announcements coming up, but uh, any insider info that you can give a friend on the other side of the mic? Absolutely, Spence. So I can't officially, officially announce it because I believe we're dropping all the info in a week or two. But this super cool company in the world of music, a really big brand reached out to me and they said, hey, we would like for you to host for us. We have this show idea. It will be weekly, Monday to Friday, and we want to give you this slot. And this company works with literally some of the biggest and coolest bands you can imagine. So I'm like, oh my gosh, holy shnikes, like this is so cool that I have a gig, I can do it from my house, they're sending me like a backdrop. It's just a really cool way to, you know, kind of have a job during a pandemic. So <laughs> there's, and I get to just host, I get to interact with their fans, they have a crazy fan base, like hundreds of thousands of followers. So it's a big opportunity. And I'm really happy that they want me to be the person to do it for them. It's, it's always surreal when they someone reaches out, and they're like, yeah, we want you to be that person. I'm like, I mean, that person behind me, but yeah, it's super cool. So I'm like really psyched about it. I wish I could share more. Uh, they're literally working on the graphics now. We have the inlays for everything. So I am really psyched to announce it. Yeah. Well, and it gives me yet another excuse, and I say it every time. You always give me good leads to invite you back on the show, but I absolutely can't wait for it. Putting you over, of course, saying that's awesome. I agree. Amazing news. I agree. And following that up with a question as well, does Alicia think she'd fit in well on that 70s show given her generally <laughs> groovy style? But funny, <laughs> I always get compared to Jackie. And so I sent something out like a couple of weeks ago, like, oh, I want to be like in a revamped that 70s show as Jackie or like play Wonder Woman or something. But yeah, I think I would totally fit in, honestly. I just love the 70s. I love the aesthetic. I love the music. I just love how effortless things seem. There's just like a very carefree vibe back then. Uh, the fashion, don't even get me started on that. I take such influence from that. Uh, so yeah. I would love to, to do that. We could even do like a special Bee Gees episode, you know, <laughs> just in some white. Uh, I was going to say, pants. like, didn't they do that roller skate episode too? Same sort of deal. 110% in for yeah. that, right? <laughs> I no, am I, just, I would love it. 100%, man. I want to tie it back a little bit. Like I said, I, I want to highlight content creation. Like I've said, you're you're one of the best of the best. I don't even think that's disputable, my opinion aside on it. You've talked often about your start and your interview with the Bombay Bicycle Club and asking a couple of questions to them. A year later, though, if my math's correct, you started Ambi. What was the process behind that? Were you, you know, were you going to go work elsewhere? You decided to start yourself or, or what was the foundation between doing your first interview and starting the brand? So the first interview was because I had my website, which I started in, this, in September of 2012. So we're talking mm -hmm. nine years is when this whole journey started. And back then, I would just kind of travel with my laptop in high school, and I would write reviews on bands. And then I took that to my parents. They found out, and they were like, oh, this is a cool thing you're doing. Like, this is just a cool way to get your creativity out. So we were at a concert. We went to see Bombay. And we had this really crappy little camera. And my dad said, why don't you go and ask them a couple questions? Because they were hanging out in the back area my sister got some artwork signed by them they're just super cool dudes and i did this really horrible two question interview with them i was 16 so nervous i loved this band so much so yeah. that happened posted on youtube it started getting views i was like oh this is strange maybe we'll do some more so i literally just started like pulling bands aside not going through publicists not like literally then i would just kind of like ambush people and be like the same hey, theory i have if they've if they've got their booking email in the twitter bio i'm sending that email yeah 100 <laughs> percent. so i would literally just walk up to people after like sessions and stuff and be like hey do you have two seconds to literally answer two questions and a lot of guys said yes it was super cool so then i uh you know my dad's always kind of been like a manager this whole journey for me and and I remember when I was 16, he was like, hey, why don't you start actually interviewing people? So next thing you know, I started working with like Warner, Universal, uh, Sony Music, getting their bands and sitting down with them. And then I was in grade 11 and it started to become real. You know, I think by grade 12, I sat down with Metallica. And yeah. then I started to realize, I started to realize like, 
oh shit, this is like I'm actually pretty something. good at this. <laughs> yeah, this is actually something. So then I decided to not uh, go to university, even though I was accepted to a few, I decided not to go and just really just kind of like live this dream that I never even knew was a dream until, you know, I was kind of like pushed into it by my dad. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> I literally was like a kid with no floaties on, just going like, just swim, damn it, just swim. And luckily, <laughs> luckily I did not drown and I'm here today. So yeah, it was really crazy. I never expected any of it. That was a very long answer to your question, but there's just so much to reflect on because yeah. you never would think that from there, you know, you'd go on this crazy journey and end up where you are. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's been it's been nuts. It really has. Not confess, as I always say. <laughs> we, we've talked enough about Dickie Roberts, okay? Don't take the whole rest <laughs> of the show over. You won a couple of awards pretty early in your career, pretty early wow. in your journalism, writing, whatever. I, I have a hard time describing myself because I do a lot. And if anybody can explain that, you can, right? But um, did you ever find there was a turning point? Like you say, was it the Metallica interview specifically? Or when did you sort of find that, okay, this is... Um, this is what's going to be for me. I think it was a couple years into it because at first it was honestly just a way to meet bands I loved and get free tickets to concerts. Like it was never yeah. something I ever looked at in a monetary sense or as a job. I was just a teenager getting into gigs, getting into bars I shouldn't have been in and just like enjoying live <laughs> music. I don't even drink. It wasn't even like I was trying to get into bars to like have a fake ID. Like I don't even like beer. I just wanted to see these bands I loved so much and interviews were the no. gateway. So you know, I did that. And then it got to the point where I remember, I think I was maybe three or four years into it. And it always felt right. And when I started kind of getting into the groove, you know, got past those yeah. two question interviews. But there was a point where I remember going through my iPod. And there were so many different bands, everyone from Juliana Hatfield, then Metallica would come on, then Motorhead, and then the Beatles would come on. And I haven't interviewed a Beatle yet. But I remember like, I interviewed Yoko Ono. And then I remember going through, oh my God, The Used, oh my God. And it was just all these different genres and all these different bands and it was literally like 32 songs in a row i'd interviewed every single person on random and it just hit me like you've done a lot and you're young and i think you, this is like something you should really pursue so that's when i started taking it very very seriously that's when i started working like bmw sent me to coachella i started working with venues around they'd like you know live nation sent me to a ton of shows and that was a cool paid gig so it just all came to this crazy beginning uh that kind of brought me to now but that was the moment where i was like you've done good kid you've done you've done good <laughs> yeah it's great to hear man of course if you guys are in the comment section like a few of you are feel free to get your questions and we've got about 15 minutes left with the interview queen and perhaps the only person i know that's a bigger fan of too hot to handle than i am alicia Atut. Don't get your questions in <laughs> No. Okay, come on. We're we're gonna get. If I'm gonna get any rumor started out there, there's gonna be Alicia who shoots hard on too hot to handle in reality shows. Man, you're a sucker for them. Give me a favorite. I'm putting you on the spot as far as that goes. Okay, so in terms of reality TV shows, I love 90 Day Fiance. Like I'm obsessed with it. I've watched. I think I missed the first season, but then just I am on a craze. Like I'm obsessed. I cannot wrap my head around it. People are blind. <laughs> um. Which leads me to another show. So, okay, so I, a while, for a while, Spence has known that I love 90 Day Fiance. I tried, like, turning him and his girlfriend onto it. You guys actually started it, which I'm super excited Yes, we about. are. We can talk about that. We'll talk about that tonight. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, anyways, though, so the reason I bring that up is because once he realized I like this utter crap, he was like, hey, you should watch Too Hot to Handle. And I was like, oh, it's so cringy. I've avoided it for like a year. I don't know. Then one night I was really bored, watched every documentary on the planet. I caught up and I was like, <laughs> okay. I pressed play, glued to the TV. I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> I was so grossed out and disturbed, but I couldn't take my eyes off. I think I watched the whole season in like a whole weekend. Literally, it took me two days. It's, and, it's literally like a tire fire. You can't take your eyes away no. from it. So then I tell my sister, Maddie, and I'm like, yo, I just watched Too Out to Handle. It, it was awful in the best of ways. And she's like, now you have to watch Love is Blind. And I was like, no, this is another. So I watched that. And then that just took, that was more offensive to me than Too Hot to Handle. Because yeah, like everyone's a horn dog in Too Hot to Handle. But everyone was so like mushy. And I'm totally for romance. But everyone was just like within two days, like, you're the love of my life. I'm going to cry. So I'm like, <laughs> You are insulting no, every relationship not. with the proper foundation. <laughs> oh my god! There's really no other way you can put it. No, we're getting that. That's that's now out into the zeitgeist. 
have to throw yeah. this one up here. I'm just going to let you read that one. <laughs> my, my dad. <laughs> oh, I do. I Alicia's like dad you. hopping into the chat. She watches some horrible shows. I, I, I will fully cop. Okay, if she does, I, I 100% do too. Sandy's yeah. got a couple of questions in here, and I want to make sure we get to the both of them. Two very different ones. Any documentaries to recommend? Ooh, oh dang. Okay, what are they all called? I watched like ten in the last. Oh, so right now I finally started watching The Staircase. I was super okay. familiar. I was super familiar with it because I actually watched the forensics files, which covered the whole case. But this mm -hmm. like deep dives. I think it's like a four part mini series on Netflix. So that one's crazy. This guy's wife falls down a flight of stairs, but he oh, pretty damn sure he did it. She definitely but, did not fall down those stairs. Yeah. Um, none of the evidence adds up. So I watched that one recently. I watched the Cecil Hotel one, which I know we've chatted about. That ending, I don't know. It just too much. I, I didn't was care to I was about frustrated. Any of opinions. Yeah. yeah, I was frustrated and perturbed in all the ways that like I shouldn't be by a documentary. Not in the interesting ways. Perturbed at the quality, I suppose. Yeah, a hundred percent. Frustrating. And then, very. Uh, I'm trying to think. Oh, I've just watched so many. I watched, uh, I started that Mormon one and I couldn't get into it, but <laughs> I did watch the Unabomber recently and that blew my oh, mind. Oh, I've heard that's good. I was, a, I was obviously aware of everything that happened, but I never knew the extent. I never knew how many he, he placed. It, it was yeah. a lot, but it was really well done. So those yeah. are a couple I'd recommend. But yeah, I could not get on the, the um, murder of the Mormons, I think. I just couldn't get on that I one. I couldn't remember, no. And then, of course, we got to touch on Sandy. Any matches you're excited about this week? It is WrestleMania week. It's the biggest oh. week of the year for pro wrestling. Honestly, I feel like this week I've kind of tuned out in terms of what's happening. <laughs> I'm going to be really honest, and this might sound bitter, but I'm just going to be honest. Um, the fact that a Mania week in terms of like all the cons and indie shows and everything is happening blows my mind. The amount of COVID cases that are probably going to come out of this is like really terrifying. So mm -hmm. I'm like shocked that this is happening. On the same side of that, I know anytime I've gone places, I've been super safe. So part of me is like, oh, I wish things were normal so I could have my gigs and, you know. It's my... like right on that edge of it, it seems like, which yeah, is almost totally. the worst part of it. If everything was shut, okay. If everything was open, okay. Right. But we're in this weird middle where things are definitely getting better, but aren't better yet. Yeah, and it, it's scary because you hear about, I think I just heard that like California is completely opening up soon, which is just ridiculous so yeah. i don't know it, it's a double-edged sword for me so i've kind of almost tuned out i've seen all these indie announcements and all these crazy shows and showcases and i think it's amazing like if you're a wrestler and you can do it well, i just realized that my little thing's in the frame here do you see in the corner <laughs> don't worry i didn't notice <laughs> that's amazing but, i'm certain um, somebody would have called you out if anybody noticed don't worry <laughs> i got a new I got, I got a new ring light and i was like oh let's test it tonight like Spence will understand if it goes to shit and something happens. I was going to say, we just see like a collapse in front of the screen. <laughs> yeah. So honestly, I've kind of been tune, tuning myself out of it. Um, I always watch certain matches if they look interesting for Mania and everything, but it's one of those things where like a lot of stuff's fast forwarded. So I'll just honestly have to see if something comes up in my feed or there's a match that was super buzzworthy and then I'll check that out. But there's nothing I'm honestly like in particular looking forward to just to be like super blunt about it. Mixed emotions. Completely fair. I could completely understand it. I don't have the experience that pretty well anybody who's done anything in pro wrestling does. Nonetheless, someone who's actually working for a promotion. I couldn't imagine what it'd be like right now to have an opportunity potentially, but have to turn it down. Or especially with us Canadians having the issues at the border and having to fly back and the quarantine opinion notwithstanding. It just makes it really, really tough to get anybody out there, right? Yeah, it's it's been a lot to process like literally for WrestleCon I had four or five different promoters hit me up like wanting me to be at their booth and it's just it doesn't make sense right now you know I wish I could be there yeah. but it just doesn't make sense um so you know hopefully things clear up and then I can start doing things again that's kind of the the goal and the hopes but as of right now I'm just doing a lot of virtual things and trying to be as safe as possible 100% friend and I appreciate it because it means that sooner rather than later if everybody continues to be safe we'll be back to this proverbial normal everybody's talking about but let's not talk about COVID I'm sure we've all talked about that shit enough over the last little bit I want to close this out 
with some MLW superlatives. So first numbers, first names, I suppose, that come to mind when I say the following, Alicia, as far as MLW roster members go. Best dressed. Best dressed. I don't know. I see these dudes just in spandex every day. <laughs> I don't well, know. Pivot, Honestly, for, pivot for favorite gear. Will that work uh, for Literally, you? that's what I was going to spin it on. Um, <laughs> I had him on my show a week ago, a week and a half ago, but um, Savio Vega, he always comes out with like such a, like the classic uh, leather vest with the Puerto Rican flag on the back. I just think it's a really cool aesthetic. So uh, he's probably has some of my favorite gear in the locker room. Yeah. Oh, and then Hammerstone has some cool gear with like the American flag pants. I really want to find them with like a Canadian or UK flag, but I have yeah. not yet. <laughs> yes, I really want that. So those are actually like really bitching pants. So those those are the two I'll give it to. Well, and when we're talking about Hammerstone, it leads me in nicely because my personal favorite theme music has to go to him 110%. Who's yours? Lawler, 100%. Excellent call. All Every right. Every time I... it comes on, I'm just like, yes, he's going to kill you. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I love the only music. reason, and I can't disagree with that by any means, I'll always make the argument for Queens of the Stone Age, but of it's course. a coin flip. It, it's a coin flip as far as it's concerned. Who is the best prankster and or ribber? Oh, gosh. Prankster. I feel like we have a lot of those guys in our locker room, honestly. But if I'm trying to think of someone who's always kind of like goofy or keeping people on their toes, uh, I'd have to say Fatu. He is yeah. always backstage. It's, it's so interesting because well, he's dead serious like, in the ring. Exactly, right? Yeah. And, like, he's, he's the sort of guy I describe as, like, could kill a brick. And it's nice oh, yeah. to hear that, like, he's hilarious. <laughs> he has, honestly, some of the best humor ever. And the way that he walks in, he sees you right and he's like, yo, sis, what's up? And then he just says this <laughs> ridiculous stuff. And sometimes he just doesn't stop talking. Like we went to, um, there was one night after the tapings we just did and we were all tested. We were all negative, like I mentioned. So we're like, you know what? Like we had a really crazy past few days. I think we were there in our secret location for like three or four days. And so we all went to Texas Roadhouse and that dinner was one of the funniest things I've ever experienced because everyone was just like, we're done. We were happy. We're all safe. We're about to eat some great food. And he was just saying stuff. I was like, Come again. He's just so he is so funny. He's like a big brother in that locker room, like like most of the guys are. So yeah. Then, then maybe you've answered the next one, but life of the party. Ooh, life of the party. Oh, that's hard. Life of the party. Um, okay, it's interesting because there's two different ways to approach it. Like every time in the locker room, if you want to hang out or just kind of chill like the injustice guys are always there but then if you want someone who's like a little bit more hyper then I definitely like would probably have to go back to Fatu but in their same way like the Von Eriks honestly have a really good vibe to them all the time so I feel like yeah. you couldn't really catch them off guard to like be in a good mood and a good vibe so yeah it's Don't crazy I with you it's so hard trying to narrow this down because I'm like, I'm It's one of those myself. good problems, though, to have, right? Yeah, if it's yeah. this difficult to figure it out, like every time you've talked to me about him, the MLW locker room has been, and you've had the opportunity to be in some great locker rooms, but like, you know, it's such a cliche, but it's the family vibe, right? Yeah, definitely. It's like I literally look across the room and I have like my big brothers. There are a couple little brothers. There are some people I know as soon as I'm hungry, I'm like, all right, it's time for the Uber Eats order. Who I got you, I got you, I got you. I got you. <laughs> And they just know, like, I love to eat. So every time I'm on my phone, they're like, you, you ordering something? So, yeah. It's just... are, you getting, are you getting for two? <laughs> yes. Most of the time, I'm, like, getting for five. But it's just a good vibe, honestly. Everyone's there to do great work and then have fun when you can. So, yeah, it's it's a really good locker room. Now we've got a brand new episode of MLW Fusion coming up tomorrow. So I am going to ask you to close it out. Interview queen and number one too hot to handle fan out there. Give me the 60 second elevator pitch for tomorrow's MLW Fusion. And then of course, plug where people can find you, whether it's online on social media, whether it's your Patreon and everything in between. Uh, you suck. I am not the number no, one. No, I don't. I, I like oh to think I'm, I'm pretty okay. I like to think I'm, I'm fine. I'm I'll fine. I'm fine for that comment. No, I'm kidding. All right. Um, 
So yes, every single Wednesday you can watch MLW Fusion. We have literally had some crazy matchups over the last few weeks. And I finally feel like so many of these feuds are kind of coming to a culmination where we're about to find out like who's really going to take championships home. People are stealing championships that clearly are not theirs. So there's just a lot happening. So if you want to kind of find out what's going to happen, uh, cause I feel like some of these might be coming to an end and then taking a swerve. You could not imagine. Um, definitely tune in every Wednesday night, 7 PM EST for free on our YouTube channel. It's as easy as that. And in terms of me, if you just type up Alicia Chu in your little Google box there, you'll find my Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, my YouTube page, along with my a fairly new Patreon, which I'm having a blast on. It's kind of been like my little open diary to vent and do photo sets and exclusives. So yeah, just type up Alicia Chu with whichever social you want beside it and it will come up. <laughs> Beautiful. Now I have to give you sort of the one word answer here because I don't want to leave Sandy out to dry. He stuck around and watched the whole show. Who do you want to interview who you haven't interviewed yet? The Rock and John Cena, Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley are probably like my top at the top. I was going to say, if we had more time on this, that was one thing I had to ask you about when we were chatting face to face, because we've talked about your Ace Fraley interview, but that is, uh, that is another one I've got to pick your brain on here sooner rather than later. But hopefully we get you back on here even sooner rather than later, but you get those interviews in the interim, right? Let's get those out of the way. Friends, <laughs> it's been great. Alicia, it has been absolutely fantastic to have you on the show. I could not have kicked this off any better. I really appreciate the time. I appreciate everything you've always done to support us. If you guys have the opportunity to, you guys can pick up the same lovely love wrestling mask that Alicia has showcased so lovingly on social media. Just head to lovewrestling.ca backslash shop. That is the place to do so. And we are trying to become a number one Canadian podcast in the wrestling category. So if you head to rate this podcast.com backslash love wrestling CA, it does help us out. However you choose to support, we appreciate it. But the difference between ordinary and extraordinary is that little bit extra. Thank you once again, Alicia, for taking the time. Unfortunately, she won't be back on next week's show. However, I've got a great guest lined up for you guys. This is someone that, again, I consider a premier journalist in professional wrestling and a great human being. That's one of my favorite things to do. Yeah, you guys can be great at your jobs, but when you've got great people like Alicia and my next guest... It's always making things easy. Tune in next week at the same bat time, same bat channel as I chat live with Inside the Ropes, Gary Cassidy, a guy who uh, has done a lot of great work in professional wrestling. There's just no other way to put it. There's no need to oversell, though, when he's going to be on the show next week to answer your questions live as Alicia was today and hopefully will be again in the future. Alicia, thanks once again. It's appreciated, man. You're a hell of a human being and a hell of a good interviewer. Don't forget to subscribe to Ambi and Alicia Atut, anywhere that podcasts are played, videos are viewed, or of course, you just enjoy following good people on social media. For the interview queen, I'm Spencer Love. We'll talk to you soon.